So if unschoolers don't necessarily use teacher manuals and workbooks like the traditional school to help their kids learn things, then what are you supposed to use so that they can learn new things? In this video, I'm sharing John Holt's ideas from his book, Instead of Education, for the many ways that unschoolers can use people and resources and other places to learn anything that they want to learn. Welcome back to Teach From Home, I'm Beth, and in the, the very first place that he suggests is one of my favorite resources, which is the library. If you've even watched just a few of my videos, you will know my just love and appreciation and obsession with our local library. Not only do I use it for myself to read lots of different books, but I use it for my kids on a weekly basis to let them go and choose books on their own. We've borrowed audiobooks, and we also go there for lots of different events that our library puts on completely free for anybody that wants to go and use it. So the first thing that he says about the library, which I love about it myself, is that it is completely free and open for anyone to use, no matter who you are. The librarians don't try to force you toward any resources that you don't want to use while you're there, or tell you how long you have to stay, or give you limits on what you can do there. It is just a free, open resource. Anyone in the community can walk in and use whatever they have there, and they can take it home or they can use something there. And if you have a question, the librarians are so happy to help you out and find you what you need or answer any questions that you have. I love that this is a resource where he points out in his book that like no one is going to try to guide you through the library when you get there. They're not going to try to make sure that you have earned the right to be there in some way if you're smart enough to be at the library. They're just saying, these are the resources that we have. Use them if you want to. If you have questions, we are here to help. It's actually one of the things that uh, Ivan Illich says in his book, Deschooling Society. And I'll talk about this a little bit more in a future episode, but... He talked about how parents that are homeschoolers, instead of acting like school teachers, should act more like librarians, right? Like they're always there to help if you need it, but they're not going to hover over you and make sure, you know, and check up on what you're doing. Uh, if you if your kids have questions and they need help with something, then you can be that resource to help them out and guide them in finding anything that they need to learn about. Now, of course, we're not completely hands off like a librarian. I mean, we're still parents to our children, but it's just saying that if they have questions, then we can help them out and we can point them towards the right resources rather than always trying to tell them what they should be learning and how they should be learning it and then testing and quizzing them. That's not what librarians are for. So he suggests that libraries carry not only books, but tapes and records and films and slide films and videotapes. This is very dated because he wrote it in the 70s. But you know, my library has not only physical books, but they have ebooks, they have audiobooks, they have CDs, they have movies and TV shows, which I'm sure most libraries have today because they've all been updated to stay with the times. In addition to these items, he suggests libraries have printers, cameras, tape recorders, and duplicators for people to use there. I know that our library personally has a copier and it has a printer that you can go in and use. There might be a tiny fee for that just to pay for the the fee of the paper that they have to use, but otherwise people can come in and make copies of things. They can print things out. There are so many computers at the library, which have been there forever since libraries were open. Um, they also have iPads um, for kids to use in the kids section if they want to go there and play games, if they want to go there and, and use, you know, educational apps. I, my kids don't use them because they have iPads at home, but if there are kids that don't have computers that they can use at home or no iPads, then they can go and use those at the library. He lastly suggests that libraries should have musical instruments for anybody to come in and use. They should have art supplies for anybody that wants to use them. Toys and games and elementary science equipment, skates, rackets, and so on. Basically just anything that you could ever want to use, but you don't have the money to afford it or you don't have space in your house to store it, uh, you could just go use it for free at the library. What? 
a concept. He says, and why not have libraries keep and lend not only tools for arts and crafts, but tools people use to repair or build their own dwellings or furniture or cars or appliances or other things they use? Who would do the work? Well, we have millions of people, many of them teachers, looking for work. And this work, unlike much of the work people do, would not use up energy or raw materials, would not pollute, and would be well worth doing. Where would we find the space? We already have it, in all those school buildings we built at such expense. In one school of about 500 students, in a city of half a million, I saw more tools and equipment for arts and crafts than were available to an entire adult population of that city. In another, even smaller city, the lab school of a college of education was almost as well and lavishly equipped. Why should this stuff not be available to any people, young or old, in or out of school, who wanted to use it? Why should kids have to go to school full time just to be able to use the school shop? Why shouldn't they be able to go to school only when they want to use the shop? And why shouldn't adults be able to use it as well? The whole public paid for these facilities with tax money, and the whole public should be able to use them. So our library has not gone that far into having tools at the library to borrow, but isn't that an amazing concept as well? Because if you're not somebody that is always doing house projects and it's not an investment for you to buy those all of those power tools that you might need because they can add up, then just to be able to go and borrow them from the library would be amazing. Likewise, with the musical instruments, those can be really expensive too. And what if your kid wants to try to play the cello and then after like three tries, they're like, I don't want to play the cello anymore. Now you have a really expensive cello at home that you need to unload and you might be able to resell it somewhere, possibly. But what if they just wanted to try a little bit, just like play it for fun for a little while to see if they're interested? Wouldn't it be amazing if the library had that? I will tell you that our library really, really loves our community and serving our community. They do have so many things for the children and for adults at our library. Not only do they have meeting rooms, they also have multiple classes for adults. I'm looking at the website right now. There's something called Creative Writing, Unleashing Your Imagination. It's a writer's workshop. It says, come learn tips to unleash your untapped imagination and get your creative juices flowing with local poet Jim O'Brien. So we have a local poet that is willing to come and do a workshop for adults on how to do creative writing. They also have like tech workshops where they'll show you how to use social media if you're somebody that doesn't know how to use that. They will show you how to use things like uh, Adobe or uh, other online software programs. They have LinkedIn Learning, which says it helps you learn anything from software training to computer programming to customer service skills and management tips. They have over 16,000 video tutorials taught by current industry experts. You set the pace and learn what you want when you want. You guys, that is extremely unschooling. That is the definition of unschooling. They have industry experts that have put video tutorials together for anyone that wants to learn about these types of things. Software training, computer programming, customer service skills, management tips, and you can just go and watch them whenever you want at your own pace. No one is going to grade you. You don't have to do a, 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 an assessment test ahead of time to see if you are capable of taking these classes. They are for anyone that wants to watch them. When you're done, you're not going to get a certificate. At least I don't think so. It just says use your library card number to sign in and you will have easy access to keep track of which courses you'd like to take and which ones you've completed. It's just it's incredible. This is the definition of what unschooling is. Anything that you want to learn, they will have a video on it. Okay, maybe not anything, but this is a start and this is through our library and all you need is a library card and all you need for a library card is to show that you are a resident. It's so simple. I just, 
I don't know what we would do without our library. They have great authors at the library. So I actually attended a great author event at our library oh, it was so many years ago. But Jamie Ford, one of my favorite authors who wrote The Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet and The Many Lives of Afang Moy, he came to our library and spoke and I got a, uh, oh, I have the book. Here it is. Love and Other Constellation Prizes. This was his book that he was promoting at the time. And I got it signed by him. It says, For Beth, It's All Love, Jamie Ford. This was 2017. It was such a long time ago. But I will never forget that. I love that they have great authors come and speak at our library. They have book clubs at our library. Why would they not? So you can go and meet with other readers and discuss books. I love it. And then they also have over 400 webinars on the library's YouTube channel which is amazing. And that's just for adults. I'm gonna tell you something really exciting. They are building a studio for teens. I mean, anybody can use it, I assume, but it's mostly just for teens uh, in the basement of our library. Currently in the basement of our library is the bookshop where they have used books that you can go and buy very cheaply there, which I've utilized a lot. But they are building this place called the studio. This studio, I'm looking it up right now. This studio is going to be an 8,000 square foot space on the lower level. The design includes a maker space with creative tools like 3D printers, sewing machines, Cricut machines, and a Glowforge laser cutter. I don't even know what that is. In addition to a computer lab, gaming area, and recording studios. This innovative area will be utilized for library programs, including hosting teens after school. If that is not the coolest thing I've ever heard of, I was so excited when I heard that they were building this at our library. It's going to be free for anyone to go and use, mostly teens, but I mean, can you believe that? It's going to have a maker space. It's going to have those types of equipment like 3D printers and sewing machines, cricket machines that most people don't own at their homes. But if kids want to go and try them out, then they can. And it's just free at the library. It's just amazing. I just can't get over it. And that is something that no one is trying to guide those kids in that space. They're, I'm sure that there's going to be adults there that know how to use those machines that will be able to guide the kids if they want to use them. Like my kids wouldn't know the first thing about how to run a 3D printer, but there will be people there that know how to use it. That'll be like, hey, you want to make this? I'll show you how to do it so that you can use it next time without me. That's exactly what it should be about. That's exactly child-led learning. Give them the right tools. Show them the possibilities and then set them loose. That's what it is. The whole point of this is, if your kids are interested in anything, go find somebody in your community. Go to your local library and watch videos. Find someone who knows how to do that, that they can learn from. That's, that's, and when you think about it that way, that just shows how homeschooling just gives you endless, limitless options for learning.